Welcome to Overdrive AF, the official podcast of Overdrive Fitness. My name is Teddy Gerzon, and I'm joined by Gina Marie Gerzon. Also, we always obviously have Destroyer producing the podcast for us, and then uh, Titan and Brajol, always in attendance. Well, actually, yeah, I think they've made it every, every episode so far. So, here we are. It's either week eight or nine in the quarantine. Um, again, just finished up another charity um, virtual workout, and uh, I'd say the top of the news is Destroyer got a new dog. So Yay. yeah, rescue. Yep. Um, Only way to do it. That's right. So enlighten us with uh, that news. What's her name? Her name is Bonita. A.K.A. Bonnie. She's a lab, we think, Pyrenees mix. Wow. Yes. She's a year old. How big is she now, Desi? She's like 58 pounds. I think we just took her to the vet. Um, she's healthy, up to date on everything. Only problem is she has uh, dew claws on both back legs. Oh, so okay. She's getting those removed next week, I think. Mm-hmm. But she's good. Yeah. How old is she? Uh, a year to a year and a half. That's perfect. You're yeah. going to get her onto uh, a tribe called Quest, little Bonita Applebum. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big song. <laughs> That'll be her theme. What color is she, Desi? She's a yellow lab. Oh, so she's definitely yellow. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. I get down with nice. yellow. Nice. That's what's up. Pie? Yeah. Aww. She's great. That's awesome. So there's a lot of there's a lot of people like we spoke about last week, right? A lot of people um, fostering and rescuing, right? Yeah. During the quarantine, what a what a great thing! Oh my god. It was a what very a competitive thing. process. Everyone's trying to to get dogs right now. Oh oh yeah. Which is is good. It's a great thing. My gosh, people are well. Some people are home a lot more now so it's a great time to do that you know we got um when we got our dogs first when we were kids that was our parents you know that was a great time to teach us responsibility being able to take care of something like that's it's a lot of responsibility so as a child or even as a family it's a great way to bond it's a great way to just teach the kids and i just think it's wonderful and it's it's there's this animals are so wonderful they bring so much joy yeah definitely a good distraction from everything right now Mm -hmm. trying to teach her things and taking her for long walks it's good stuff how's her temperament she's it like i at first when we got her i thought she'd been like sedated for a while oh really but she's just that she's chill chill she's that's awesome yeah she just well she's from the south right out. yeah she's just is a different it's yeah. a different pace that's all yeah she's just easy going like that <laughs> that's i am so happy for you guys thanks yeah what a wonderful thing and you said she's crated right now yep yeah because uh she's young so we know that if if we weren't around she'd probably be trying to eat <laughs> everything off every surface possible mischievous well they get that way you know but that's where you know they just like children you know we have to teach and to learn what's what's allowed what's not allowed what what's right and what's wrong you know like it's all it's all process (laughs) who's she uh favoring right now in your family aiden big time aiden yeah Screw that valedictorian. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets everything. I mean, I mean to be fair, he's like dedicated the most time to like training her. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, well, but, yeah. You should train her to pee on command. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Aiden, we'll your bed's there. wet. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Turn it into a weapon. 
Or like if she poops, it's only in his pillowcase. Right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. Turn them against each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could sneak her little sa- snacks and be like, sorry, Aiden, she loves me more now. <laughs> yeah. I think if she favors anything, it's treats right now. She's... Well, I mean, who doesn't love their treats? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Loyal to the snacking game. Absolutely. Yeah. Titan's a snacker. <laughs> Right, Titan, you're a snacker. Well, he didn't get that size from he liked, starving. He liked snacks. <laughs> well, he was 40 pounds lighter when we got him, when we rescued yeah. him. Right, Titan? He was skinny. He's, uh, I'd say his body's uh, morphed along his life, similar to Charles Barkley in the NBA. <laughs> Came in slim and leaving svelte. <laughs> but still amazingly athletic. Yeah. There, is, there still isn't a pounds. thing that Titan can't jump over. He has his bouts of of, uh, of athleticism, yes, it's true. Mm-hmm. Is he getting to, like, his Rockets years at this point? <laughs> now that he's nine? Yeah, but, you know, just like from day one, still extremely vocal. Still a contributing player. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's got something on his mind, he lets you know. Could be in the middle of the live workout, too. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to be center of attention. That's been a fun game to play watching the lives, is trying to like place bets on when Titan's just going to walk <laughs> into the middle of the, <laughs> the floor. Who needs a spot? Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you how flexible I am. Should chug a Jaeger bomb every time they bark in a live. <laughs> That'll make the workouts a lot more interesting. Oh. It's like, I don't know what I'm going to vomit over right now. Is it maybe it's the alcohol? Maybe it's the sweating. I don't know. Maybe both. So, um, beautiful day today. No, yeah, it definitely is beautiful. Um, I think Major League Baseball is very close to coming back. Um, I saw Bryce Harper actually proposed, I think it was a 130 or 135 game season in which you would play Tuesday through Sunday. Everyone would have Mondays off. Um, You'd have double headers on Sunday and a six man pitching rotation with a 30 man roster so that you can get that many games in and keep it fresh and everyone would still make their money. And the fans would be able to still enjoy a quality product for almost a full season. That's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty close. More than three quarters of a season, I'm pretty sure. Let's do that math real quick. But I was, uh, yeah, it's uh, seven eighths of a season. Mm-hmm. Oh no, a little less than that. But um, nonetheless, impressive. So uh, I could, I was shocked to read and post about all that. Five sixths of a season. So I don't know if he, if if Major League Baseball could pull that off, that would be amazing. Yeah, I know that the NBA also said that they're pretty. They're getting more and more optimistic about a comeback. I think they're a lot closer, actually, to yeah. starting. They're favoring, I think, Disney World in, yeah. in Florida or something. Because mm-hmm. it would have space to like accommodate players' families and stuff. And I don't think they're going to like jump right to the playoffs either. Oh, really? I think because they were saying that they wanted to get like all 30 teams in in some way. So, again, the, people can make their money. I think think the most ridiculous sports headline right now, though, is uh, the NFL is flirting with um, the idea, and it has to go to a vote, but the idea of improving your draft position if you hire a black or a a minority um, GM or head coach. I'm like, (laughs) like... That's like just allowing somebody black into your group and being like, look, we're not racist. <laughs> like, wait, how could you incentivize just by hiring on race? Like, I don't know. It's, it's probably the most ridiculous thing I've heard in pro sports in a while. You don't think that it's uh, Dinwiddie letting people crowdfund his next contract and, and pick <laughs> his team? That was, a, that was a solid move by Dinwiddie. 
I don't know. I don't think it's going to work out. No, it's not. But his idea almost um, threw the NBA into <laughs> into shambles. The the basically they they held it. They 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 basically said like it was it just somehow broke the fine print in something within the collective bargaining. But um, I'm sure they just didn't want him to do it. And they're oh, like, he would turn the whole league somewhere. upside down. And speaking of basketball, we are all caught up on The Last Dance. Can't wait for... I think there's two more episodes, right? Yeah. I episodes 9 really and 10. Oh, yeah. It's great. Really interesting. A lot of shit talking. I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, even, even like, way into retirement, still a lot of shit talking going on. Mm-hmm. The whole Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> thing. Nobody likes Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> He's the worst thing to happen Thomas. to Knicks. Very he pompous. And th- that whole team. Oh, my God. What, the Pistons? Yeah. The bad boy the Pistons? Bad boy when they, yeah. they knew they were losing and they just walked off the court. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't even accept defeat. But meanwhile, like, ha- that, you're, you're, you're getting paid millions of dollars to do this. And that, what, that show of the lack of sportsmanship, the, that you can't handle it. But then you kind of throw your nose up in the air, and you're and you're just like, oh well. That's how we handled it last time. That's what we. That's what we do. That's what we, right? That's what, that's what he said. Didn't, didn't Isaiah tell Yeah, he that? tried to say he was oh, like, well, that's what we do. He said the Celtics did it to them or whatever. So I don't so know. So what? Exact. That is literally like a, what a child would say. Well, so and so did it to me. So, the fuck. It's introducing a whole new generation of people to hating the Pistons. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I did love how they were, how rough they were. Um, I mean, the Knicks did the same shit, but they weren't classless like that yeah. when they came around. Um. No, I love though how like some people were just like, "Man, Michael Jordan was such an asshole." It's like, but he won. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been way worse. Yeah, that's the thing that I think the documentary has kind of opened me up to is that like I've always just been a contender that like LeBron is is the best just because of his like all around athleticism. But mm-hmm. like seeing Jordan's like work ethic and like talking all that shit, yeah, and then still being like yeah. amazing, it's, it's very know. convincing. I've never. I mean, growing up watching Jordan, and I hated Michael Jordan back in the day because he was so he good. pounded the Knicks. Yeah, and uh, like I couldn't believe I couldn't couldn't wrap my head around the fact, like me as a child, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that he was so good. He was so dominant, and Phil Jackson was such a great coach, and that Bulls team was assembled perfectly. I just I hated it. I hated every second of it. It made me sick. But I, like, respected how good he was. And then LeBron comes along, and I just... LeBron's an amazing athlete, but I just don't think... I, I, I don't put him on the same level as Michael Jordan. Because, like, the di- main difference is just, like... I mean, in a sense, Kobe is Jordan 2.0. But, you know, Kobe and Jordan, they're killers. Like, LeBron will pass up the last shot. Yeah. any given day it's a totally different personality and mm-hmm. mentality and people would be like oh Le- jordan whined to the refs too it's like jordan got on the refs just like anybody else did but he would do it like he'd be in- infuriated if he didn't get a call whereas lebron's crying about not getting a call and then flops and jordan like took a beating for like eight straight years before he finally started winning so i don't know I mean, Jordan's knock, too, when he came in the league, is that they're like, he's only 6'6", six, six, how dominant could he be? Like, imagine if he was 6'9", six, 6'8", six, and that athletic. Like, I mean, ba- that was basically Pippen anyway, because Pippen is like, he was a guard. He was a point guard, and then he had a huge growth spurt. And it's kind of yeah. like, what do I do with this body? It's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's basically what happened to Anthony Davis. Yeah. Anthony Davis was, what, he was six. Two six one his freshman year of high school. Yeah, and then by the time he uh, got to Kentucky, he was six eleven, seven like foot, some yeah. shit like that. 
His parents are pissed. They're like, ah, yeah, none of your clothes fit. We can't afford anything. I love how I love how well Phil Jackson was able to keep them all in check. And yeah. like really manage that team. And I loved how he brought such a that Native American kind of spiritual side into the mix. How he was so he kind of grew up with that and he was so fascinated by it. And then he brought that into the like the team element and like I just thought that was pretty cool too. He was the Zen master. Yeah. I mean just yeah, they needed it. They needed it. But look at how well they they were really solid. They were solid. I think they they uh they said in one of the episodes basically what he felt molded him as a coach was uh coaching in that Puerto Rican professional basketball league. Right, yeah. And uh cuz it was so like yeah rough and mm. violent and it was so intense like every freaking game was intense we're like you know town mayors would be banned from showing up because they would like shoot a player if their t- if their town's yeah. team lost or something teams would get attacked uh, and yeah so that makes sense. you know what's crazy uh like six degrees of separation to overdrive fitness um i heard i i believe what i read if i read if what i read was correct if i'm interpreting it correctly at least um uh, Zoe and Alexa's grandfather coached in that same league. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure I read that proud. Because their okay. family's from Puerto Rico. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that they're that's both insane. great basketball players. Yeah. They're great. They're both great. Zoe's better than Alexa. She scored a thousand points in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if so fire. if Alexa's listening. <laughs> I think we just started a fight in the Malbert household. Oh, <laughs> Perfect timing. For yeah, that. as if we don't need to start. As if that that household needs another fight amongst the two sisters. <laughs> well, they're fiery. That's it shows on the court. Oh yeah. They're they're real. They're solid athletes. Mm-hmm. I'm just shocked. I still haven't seen Alexa throw a punch in a basketball game yet. <laughs> I feel like she's been very close, probably two dozen times. <laughs> um yeah so what's new at the gym you know we're uh we're i mean the online training's been going well the virtual charity workouts been going well mm-hmm. uh we're in the midst of moving a lot of our online training over like we're still going to keep overdrive homeworks up homeworkouts.com but as far as keeping tabs on everybody we're in the midst of moving everybody's uh, uh, accounts into trainer eyes so if you're new to us or new to hearing that name trainer eyes will allow us to house all of our um, communication in one spot along with your progress photos your your weigh-ins um, if you're working with Gina on nutrition that will be in that same file and um any future workouts that we may program for you in addition to attending our live stream workouts um, will also be there so it just allows us to be to operate as a business a lot um, more fluid while still giving everybody that personal attention yes which is nice we can uh we can function more easily, basically, and still give you all of everything that we offer. So uh, I'm excited about that because mm-hmm. I'm constantly going back in everyone's notes, checking to see, all right, when's the last time we spoke? What was this? What was that? All right, cool. It's more efficient. Yeah. We'll be more efficient. Pumped. Trainer eyes. The guys- app is free. Do you guys know what a phase of reopening you fall under? Oh, yeah. That was one thing we were definitely going to talk about today, and I totally forgot. Well, we can still talk about it. No, no, I know. I mean, That's why I'm they, here. Were, they were pushing out May 15th, and now May 15th has come and gone. And they started to open up, what, some basic parks and things like that. But um, now the next, the next uh, date that's been... Um, listed or, or announced as per Cuomo, right? Is it June 13th? 
Well, well it's very it's, vague. Everything it's is confusing. Very vague. So there's a difference in terms. There's two basic terms that were thrown out there. There was um, New York on pause. That's one. And then there is the, uh, I guess, the stay-at-home order or whatever. So basically, New York on pause was to May 15th um, or whatever, the stay on pause. So I, basically, the, the stay-at-home order was expired on May 15th, but the New York on pause order was extended to June 13th. So basically, the difference is this. New um, the stay at home order expiring allows allows certain regions of the state to reopen as long as they meet all seven of the necessary metrics laid out by uh, King Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, um, the tyrant, and uh, what what he did in extending New York on pause means that you know if you meet the metrics you can reopen. If not, you're definitely, like, if somehow you hit all seven metrics by June 13th, then you can reopen immediately. So it just basically means, like, through June 13th, everyone still has to exercise social distancing. Even if your your whole region's reopened, you still have to be smart. Like, it basically states that the June 13th order basically states that, you know, even though your region's reopened like you started phase one you still have to you know do your best to practice social distancing and only phase one industries can reopen you know um if you are going to play any type of sport recreationally it it can basically only be like tennis or something because you can compete from a distance as opposed to like you know um i don't know swimming or you know, uh, attending a grappling class or something like that, you know, uh, and logically, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, you guys want to hear what phase that we were thrown into? We can't tell you cause we don't know. So, uh, gyms and, uh, you know, fitness centers have not been put into a category, a phase yet. We have no idea. I think we heard what salons and barbershops were thrown into phase two. And not for anything, if salons and barbershops are thrown into phase two and you're on top of each other in a salon and a barbershop because, right, you and your client, you're doing their hair, you're shaving their beard, you're giving them a hot towel, you're washing their hair, whatever, you're doing their nails. I mean, there's no reason why a personal training studio, I'm not, nece- I'm not saying necessarily a globo gym of 28,000 square feet, whereas we are a personal training studio of 2,000 square feet with two bay doors and a very large parking area um, and cement area that we could use outside as well because we always do. Um, I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. No, it definitely doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense. To to lump um, studios and gyms into the same category is... uh, extremely unfair um i think our members are way over it they're ready to come back our athletes are way over it they're ready to come back um it's time it's time to reopen it's time it's time to uh get this economy rolling it's time to allow the small businesses to do their job and make their money so that they can pay their bills and continue to put food on the tables and feed themselves (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think if anything the small victory is just to know that like our region of New York I think is close to hitting all seven mm-hmm. benchmarks we've, mi- we've hit five Yeah, so that's a lot higher than I thought we would be at yeah especially considering some of the regions lumped into our area mm-hmm. I thought we'd be way behind but Especially with Westchester. Yeah. But I heard Westchester took a, a positive turn um, yesterday. So oh, that's good. Yeah, we could yeah. be a lot closer than we think. And then just knowing that that also means that, like, less people are flooding the ER and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yes. It's, it's all very big. Yeah. Well, I think I heard 
Cuomo said that um, hospitals in Westchester can start taking non-COVID related patients. That's a huge step. I yeah. think that's what I read. Um, I did read that about some areas, but I believe I read that about Westchester, which is huge. Considering, yeah. you know, um, you know, Westchester isn't just like what some people assume, you know, the, the rich swanky areas like a Scarsdale or something, you know, Westchester do is, does have Yonkers, you know, so, you know, it's a heavily, heavily populated area. Um, when we all know, we've seen like, it's usually the heavily populated areas that were hit the hardest. So um, for hospitals to reopen in that manner, that's huge. That's great. That's yeah. what we want to hear. Just to know that we're coming that much closer, even. Mm -hmm. you know, as humans, we need social interaction. You know, we're, um, we haven't evolved into being solitary. You know, it allows us to thrive. That social interaction is really important. <laughs> You know, it's uh, gyms definitely need to be reopened. It's because you know it's actually starting to bother me. A lot of people are starting to share, just like last week. The whole popular thing was to share pandemic, you know, when which I have a huge problem with. But it's not. We're not going to talk about it today. But this week, the new sharing trend is um, a research study done on the effectiveness of vitamin D. You supplementing vitamin D and and fighting uh, COVID nineteen. Now I'm not going to say that vitamin D uh, supplementation uh, won't help defeat COVID nineteen, but because I guess the study said that like people, a lot of people that died of COVID nineteen were vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, that's that's a fact. Like that's what was, that's what the study showed. Cool, but this you know to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. The, a lot of those people just weren't healthy at all. Mm -hmm. So, like, yes, chances are if you are 150 pounds overweight, you know, you weren't doing much to be active or eat properly. So, yeah, there is a high chance you're going to be vitamin D sufficient, uh, deficient. deficient. So, um, you know, it's like the fact that people are just sharing these articles now and just saying, like, oh, if you take vitamin D, you're going to be totally fine. You can fight COVID-19 and we can reopen. Like, no, that's not how this works. You don't just, like take a pill and then you know we can all just take off our masks and start walking around in public and hugging each other again like no am i am i tired of wearing masks in public yes absolutely but i'm more tired of the like the pure american way of like if a little bit of something is good then a lot of it is great or just like pure ignorance into situations and just be like oh like all right the mask doesn't work there's studies showing the mask doesn't work so we should just go out and rip it off you know, herd immunity, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, the, that pure ignorance is what led us to the situation that we're in. Or it didn't give us COVID-19, but it sure as hell didn't didn't help in stopping the spread of it because there's just a lot of dumb people out there. Um, it, sometimes the things I see makes me wonder if um, Darwinism really is as effective as it is on paper. Because I feel like more people should be dying of dumb shit on a daily basis than what we actually do witness. I mean, maybe that's God being very forgiving, which is a great thing. But um, I thought only cats had nine, nine lives, not humans. It's kind of like Idiocracy. Have you ever seen that movie? No, tell me more. Highly recommend. It's this comedy with, like, Terry Crews and Luke Wilson and stuff about, like, this post-apocalyptic future where like all the like idiots that seem invincible for some reason are the ones that ended up like repopulating over and over and like reproducing so it's this like dystopian future where they're like all that's left and these two people from like now end up in there and like everyone thinks they're like amazing geniuses but they're just like two normal regular people <laughs> i think we were sold on terry cruz in it because uh we can't get enough of terry cruz pack pop yeah. yeah yeah this is one of his best that's best his performances. signature he's like a pro wrestler that they elected president <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical imagine if terry cruz is president oh my goodness 
We're not that far away from it. Well, then, 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 <laughs> you, then you know that gyms would have been open already. Gyms would never have closed. <laughs> Seriously. And, and everybody would have been ripped, continued to stay ripped, be ripped, stay ripped, and everything else. I mean, while we're waiting <laughs> for all types of gyms to reopen, I mean, maybe maybe the government should be um, coming up with newer regulations into keeping gyms cleaner and more sanitary. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, don't serve pizza every Friday in your gym and call your place a health club. Mm, or bagels, bagels and cream cheese or whatever. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's That kind of defeats the purpose of getting healthy. Yeah. But I don't know. Whatever. I just can't wait till gyms open. I know some gym oh, owners are I, I very a, vocal. So Go ahead. We, so, so I spoke with one of one of our friends this morning. Clients, um, well, client former members. Now they moved, um, but but very good friends of ours. And then she was saying that there's a, I guess, they're in Connecticut, and um, one of the larger um, upscale gyms, I guess, in the area. Uh, one of the rules now is that um, it's not necessary f- for you. They're opening up. They're opening up. I think the end of this month um, because they have orders that they can. I guess the state can start to open. But she said to me this morning that so this gym. I, I don't know if they belong there. I didn't ask, but so they said that um, it's not necessary that you wear a mask while you're working out. But you must wear a mask while you're walking around the gym. That doesn't make any sense, first of all. You should just not have to wear it at all, if it that's the case. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you, yeah, you, you shouldn't wear it. You should not wear it when working out. Be- right. And besides the fact that things are not going to be sanitary from person to person anyway, because people aren't necessarily cleaning their space after they use the equipment every time and people are going to have the mask on their face and then have to touch their face to maneuver the mask because the mask is going to move because you're talking and you're breathing and things of that nature and so you're you're already apt to touch and move and things when you know that once that mask is placed on your face there should be no touching or moving or maneuvering of that mask because there you go the spread it's all over again doesn't make any sense you don't have to wear it while you're exercising which is stupidity anyway but you have to wear it while you're walking around the gym doesn't make any sense at all it doesn't make any sense but those are the rules that's the rule of that club of that facility it's more dangerous to have to have somebody wear it and put it on while they're walking around because like in normal circumstances you shouldn't be touching your face while working out anyway mm-hmm. because you touch the bar and then you touch your face. You don't know who used the bar or bell before you or the dumbbell or the machine. So now they're saying, all right, take that whatever. mask since you're going from the pec deck to the leg press. On your walk to the leg press, mm-hmm. put your mask on. Yes. So you're touching the mask that you're not supposed to touch whilst trying to stay sanitary. Mm-hmm. Like doctors don't touch their mask in the OR or you shouldn't at least. And that's, it's just like some gyms are saying you have to wear you have to wear gloves while you work out and your entire hand must be covered. You're, and, and now that you have your gloves on and now you have to put your mask on and off. But you're cross contaminating anyway. What's that protecting? So those particles are are being placed onto the mask and then the mask doesn't protect against everything because how many I don't know from what the research shows is how many millimeters or whatever I don't know that you do receive and don't write or, or you're protected from so it's like there's no 100% protection yeah. doesn't everything make any I've, sense everything I've heard is just don't use gloves at all pretty much yeah I, I got an antibody test yesterday oh really and the did? doctor at the place was like just don't wear gloves mm, it's anywhere. pointless it's wow. not gonna help I did it first, and I was like, this is stupid. So I stopped wearing them because I'm like, all right. Like, if you're in the OR and you switch gloves, you're doing it so you don't cross-contaminate anything. So you go to the supermarket. You're not a doctor. You're not a nurse. You're not in the medical field. You're just a Joe Schmo. 
just like everybody else in the supermarket. And not that those are the only people that shop for food, but you're there, you put on your gloves, you know, you grab one item, you're like, ah, maybe I didn't want that. You put it back on the shelf. Then you go grab what you really want and you throw it in your cart. You just touch two different things and then put and then put the second item in your cart. So whatever you touch before the first item, whether it be the shopping cart that you grabbed or the basket, what the hell? Like you just you literally just spread it. It's the same as if you were barehanded. Just there's no need to wear these gloves. People that really need the gloves are the ones in the hospitals. Let them fucking use the gloves. There's no need for anybody to be wearing them. Yeah, and then that leads to like the shortage of equipment for the people that do need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, then you have, unfortunately, right? So you have those healthcare workers, frontline workers that have to end up scrubbing down their equipment and reusing it four or five days, hoping that it's disinfected enough so that they don't have they're not they won't get it they won't con- cross contaminate they won't spread it to their patients and that that they're protected at the same time that's scary too it's really scary and just like another PSA PSA public service announcement reminder I'm not sure if I've said it in the podcast yet but um, people these uh, these regular masks that you're wearing or the cloth masks or anything um they're not smell proof so stop ripping ass in public (laughs) because uh i almost vomited in my own mask the other day i just i don't i i don't know what you're eating to make it smell that bad it's terrible it literally smells like you are already dying of covid19 and then you're spreading the disease through your bottom burping in public <laughs> what the hell stop it's disgusting i'm done <laughs> and on that note <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad clean up your nutrition people yeah <laughs> get some veggies in there <laughs> please please a lot of people need to eat more veggies a lot the green leafy ones <laughs> Don't just grab a bag of peas and be like, oh, I got my Avengers in. That fiber in. Oatmeal, apples, things like that. Berries. Yes. My oh my. As my brother would say, get some psyllium husk. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I'm never backed up. I drink a gallon of that psyllium husk. I was like, damn, John. (laughs) It's a lot. Oh, man. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll, we'll be open soon. Yes, that would be great. We'll be able to conduct business. I think our biggest problem is that once we reopen, we are not going to be able to fight off the hugs. I know. Yes. Or people are just going to totally bypass me for a hug and go straight for the dogs, which I'm totally cool with. But you can't take them home with you. <laughs> No renting, no borrowing. Speaking of pets, it's funny how like one of our friends, Drew, said that uh, he's got three cats. The one cat that's always super social will greet any stranger at the door and be like, what's up? Is now all of a sudden like, bro, why are you still home? You're supposed to go to work. Like you're cramping on my daily routine here of being a cat and having this apartment all to myself. And then the other cat that's normally just like, what are you doing? Who are you? I know you're here every day, but why are you looking at me? Stay away from me. All of a sudden, that cat's like super social and just like, what's up, bud? I know you've had me for like five years, but now we're tight. Uh-huh. So. I think hysteric. the animals are definitely out of routine. Yes. That's for sure. But I am, this is beautiful weather. Let's bring more of this weather. People need to get out. There's definitely more cars on the road for sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. People are done staying at home. They are done. They want to be out. They want to live their lives again. They want to be outside, in the parks, working out, seeing their friends, going to barbecues, maybe going out to dinner. You know? 
I saw um, three guys basically tailgating at McDonald's in New City when I drove by early, earlier this morning. Um, six feet apart, obviously, but you know that and they were they were not young guys. I mean, they're not like they didn't fight in World War One, but if I had to guess, they were like late forties, early fifties. And they're just they just set up shot on the lawn and uh they're having their their breakfast at mcdonald's That's great. is uh we can't do this forever you no. know and and unfortunately like uh i mean i understand you know rule, rules need to be needed to be set in place to keep everybody safe and you know keep everybody healthy but now i mean there are you know states now reopened and it's been weeks and all is well so i think from that cue we should take that and start to allow other states to open reopen be smart about it but reopen it's really important you guys got anything else to add i think we're good we are ready to have everybody back and I don't know. We really miss everybody. So mm-hmm. um, people are itching, itching so bad. They just want to be back here and with the barbells. They want to be working out. They want to be sweating. They want to be on the platforms again. You know, it's important. Get their mind right. A little pump. Mm-hmm. See the dogs. So let's wrap this up. Uh, we'll see everybody else, everybody next week. Mm-hmm. Please tune into our virtual charity workout every Saturday at noon on our Overdrive Fitness Facebook fan page, uh, or reach out to us for the Zoom link. And uh, you know, take advantage of this nice weather. Uh, get some vitamin D so you can fight COVID nineteen. Even if you're a fat piece of shit that's never done anything to get healthy, I'm just kidding. No, definitely get outside. Um, at least those endorphins get a little active while being smart, practicing social distancing. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next time. Peace.